The mysterious office is probably the oldest room at the chamber in Prague. Or if it isn't exactly the oldest room, it certainly feels like the oldest. The not quite coherent set design and the numerical puzzles all feel a little outdated, as does the background story here. Rumor has it that while planning their very first escape room, the game designers at the chamber came across a bunch of old documents in this very location. Apparently they were the leftovers from one of the former owners of the apartment, a strange and very gloomy gentleman who used to live right here in these rooms. The game designers went around to the neighbors and asked whether they knew anything about the former resident, and what they found out is what you have to discover for yourself in this escape room. In this way, the mysterious office doesn't set up a background story or put you into a specific historical context. No, the mysterious office is, first and foremost, a game room, a playground where you have to solve a string of puzzles in order to discover what the guy did. There is no story, and therefore, no immersion. When you enter the mysterious office, you are transported back in time to the 1920s. It feels like you step into the office of maybe a private investigator, or maybe a writer, or maybe a secretary. There's a huge wooden desk with an antique typewriter, old paintings cover the walls, and there's even a beautiful, if defunct, grandfather clock. Even though these knickknacks and the rest of them try all they can to transport you into the setting and the game world, you quickly notice the incongruous details. Holiday snapshots and modern postcards are framed in a very modern way on the wall. A big mirror covered with strange symbols also makes it hard to be immersed in the set design, and then there are the modernized padlocks that seem to stare you right in the face from the get-go. All of this leads the mysterious office to feel like a gimmicky set for a puzzle game on children's TV. Once you venture on into the more secretive areas of the game, it gets slightly worse. The high-key lights and family-friendly puzzle game atmosphere is replaced with a much more horror-inspired set design, which, frankly speaking, doesn't make any sense. Especially if you try to relate it to the first section of the game. The overall experience ends up being somewhat confused. It's a real shame since the change in mood and genre makes the mysterious office rather inappropriate for children. The very same children who seem to be the target audience for the first part of the game. The puzzles in the mysterious office are much better structured than the nonsensical storyline. However, let's make it perfectly clear. The puzzles and riddles are linearly designed. You start with A and end up with Z, and there's only one correct way through the game room. And furthermore, in nearly all of the puzzles, you have to find a numerical code that you need to dial up in a padlock. You open up a wide variety of boxes and cabinets and doors, and all of them hold a clue to the next little puzzle, so you know exactly where to go next. It's very straightforward, but, and this is what we enjoyed about the mysterious office, the puzzles are also very family-friendly, fun and creative. It never feels like you have to solve a number of boring crosswords or math problems. On the other hand, many of the numerical codes have to be found in a very inventive way. We encountered puzzles where we had to use the aforementioned mirror in a specific way, there's also a riddle that involves a number of animals, and then there are the framed postcards also mentioned before, and it's all good fun, family-friendly fun, which again makes it such a shame that the game changes into a horror game in the final part. Afterwards, we simply couldn't remember all the puzzles, there are that many, and since there's no proper story in the room, they just end up being puzzles, nothing more, nothing less. But it's quite an achievement that the chamber have managed to cram them all into this little space. We regret to say that our entire gaming experience in the mysterious office was ruined by our communication with our game master or rather the walkie-talkies we were equipped with in this room. While we were playing the mysterious office, another group of Czechs were next door, playing an escape room called Hacker's Nest, also provided by the chamber. And all the time, all the time, during our game, we could hear them communicate with our game master. 
in check over the annoyingly loudly crackling loudspeakers of the walkies to say that it was just an irritating disturbance in our gaming experience would be a complete underestimation of this problem. Not only were we taken out mentally out of the room and the puzzles time after time, the other team and the game master had overly long conversations about the tough puzzles in Hacker's Nest, presumably. This meant that we couldn't use the walkies and reach the game master because the other guys blocked the airwaves with their conversation. The problem was very apparent to all parts, even to the Czechs in the other room, who probably had to deal with our English questions too. However, there were no excuses from the Game Master, no solutions, no suggestions that we could just stop the clock for five minutes and reset the walkies. No, nothing. This needs to be fixed. We received four hints in total and solved the room on time, but the overall experience was more or less ruined by the faulty walkie-talkies. The Mysterious Office is first and foremost mysterious. There's no proper setup or storyline to speak of, the set decoration doesn't really come coherently together, but seems to point in many different directions all at once. And the communication problems in our game were staggering. But the string of exploratory and creative puzzles were fun and diverse, in spite of all the codes and padlocks.